Super Joker here. Okay, so I got a treat for all you guys that are into numismatic coins. They're really rare and collectible. Because Franklin Street Coins is one of the top coin stores in my city, you never know who you're gonna run into down here shopping. I'm sure you guys know him. This is Robert. He's got a very successful YouTube channel called Coin Op. You guys have seen many of his auctions. He really specializes in the super rare and highly collectible coins. <laughs> Hello, YouTube coin community. All right, yeah, and there will be a link to his channel. You guys know him from Coin Op and his lovely wife back right there, and, they, uh, and they're just an asset to our community. You want to say a few words? I'm sure they know who you are already. Well, <laughs> I'd like to take and uh, point them to the Cherry Pickers Guide is out. Right. We have it available at our channel. All righty. Okay, uh, the one thing, the reason I brought it down to Phil's, because I know Phil has one, and that is a discovery coin that I found oh, many, yeah. many years ago, back in 2015, and it made it as a feature to the Cherry Pickers Guide, and uh, I figured Phil needed to get him some. So. All right, well, I'll tell you what, there will be a link to this too, so that they can purchase this right here, they can get this. They can purchase that through our channel. Okay, absolutely. Okay, direct, so. All right, well that's good information there. It's good yeah. running into you, that you never know who you're gonna run into <laughs> down at Franklin Street Coin. There'll be a link to his channel, and a link to where you can, guys can get this book right here, and uh, we'll just leave it right there. Okay. All right, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Thank you, that. take yep. care everybody, and happy hunting. There you go, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I'll leave a link in the description to uh, Coin Op. Robert's channel and if you guys want to get a copy of the cherry pickers guide just go to his channel and I'm sure you'll find all the information you need right there you know who knows who's next to come through these doors all right so we're gonna get right into this video and I'm gonna play the entire conversation that me and Phil had on the subject of spot price and premiums now you guys know I just posted a video where I talked about my view on spot price and how it affects our ideas around premiums, paying high premiums based on spot price. Now, I talked to Phil about that. I asked him if he saw the video, he did. And so he gave me his opinion on that. And to say that his opinion is different than my opinion or my view on spot price and premiums would be an understatement. <laughs> Almost didn't post this video because I didn't want to give the idea that you know, there was a conflict between our chains of thought or what we thought. Um, it really doesn't matter. Information is important. And his view is just as important in my view as it is your view. So I'm gonna let you guys hear his take on spot price and premiums. And then after the conversation, I'll come back and we'll talk a little more. My opinion on that would be that uh, spot price um, affects probably, uh, you know, a lot of the silver on the market because it really has nothing else to to value itself upon. Uh, so, when you talk about spot price and premiums, I've always said if you you know if you like the coin, it's hard to find, and you know people are asking a certain amount for it. Uh, I always believe that the market will set itself. So, to me, a premium is basically the market setting itself up for whatever that coin's worth. So the coin's going to have to stand on its own at some point, uh, regardless of where spot price is, if it's based on a silver or gold value. Um, mm, that's interesting. So, to, you know, you have, and then you have the, a lot of coins that can't stand on their own. They're simply, you know, punched out of dies. Uh, they're bars, they're rounds, they're, whether it's gold or silver, and they really have nothing to fall back on. So I think we need a spot price for those to have a basis for. But everything else, if, if, if you like it, and, and, you know, not getting too far off the subject, but, you know, like, let's talk about silver bars some people were willing to pay a huge amount a huge premium for certain silver bars they really have nothing to fall back on except the rarity of the bar so right. i think over so you're over, speaking of the um Engelhards and maybe some, a few of the Johnson Matthews. And some of the very rare johnson matthew right. bars and some of the rare um, you know we had cincinnati bars right, here exactly, yeah. um so you know every coin or every bar every, every piece that you you purchase really is going to be a, um, based, the price is going to be based on supply and demand, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I think the bar or coin, whatever it is, is going to set its own demand um, based on how many are available. Everything else will get thrown into that bullion market. And of course there has to be some, I think has to be some way that 
you can value what you own and it has to be based on the bullion market so um, the the coins that seem out of out of touch with the bullion market they've all basically created a supply and demand issue on their own okay so they've have oil really crossed into numismatics, but they've crossed into a supply and demand collectible market, and everything else that really is available in, in huge quantities. Say the, say the Buffalo Round, which you see everywhere, and it's made by various manufacturers, but it's the same design. It's got looks like an old Buffalo nickel. Right. Um, there's so many of those out there that pricing on that particular ounce of silver is going to be based on lowest price wins. It's okay. not going, there's nothing special about one over another. So there's no way for it to create a market for itself in terms of supply and demand. One, one equals another. Right. So it has to have something to fall back on in terms of what is the value of this. So that's where we end up falling back on spot price. Uh, that, is, that is a perspective that I just yeah. completely overlooked. If there's a lot of them out there, you can go to every coin store in town and you can find baskets of them. Again, what's the winning... You know, the, the winner, on, winner right. on that is going to be who sells that is going to be the person that prices them lower. Right. Now, you can equate that to supply and demand, but I don't really say that supply and demand because they're readily available. The supply and demand I'm talking about is the, the rarer pieces where you can't find them everywhere and they're hard to find. You don't find them every day you walk in. You don't see them all the time online. And people wait around for them to come up. And then when they come up, you have certain pe certain people that were willing to pay certain amounts for them, and they'll outbid each other to get them. To me, that's a supply and demand, and that to me is where either a coin or a bar creates its own market. And once it gotcha. creates its own market, then it kind of trades in that market from then on out. You know, unless everybody that ever wanted that coin or bar is gone, and they don't, right. there's no demand for it anymore. But it's going to it's going to create a little market, and and that little market is going to create basically its it's a little price, you know, price range. Right. So let me see if I understand what you're saying. So basically what I'm hearing from you and your, from your view is the, the less spot price has an effect on silver products is the ones that are sought after. The ones that maybe have some value beyond what the silver is. And it's mm -hmm. not an ounce of silver. It's sought after because maybe the mintage or maybe what's on it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are less affected by spot price. Yes. The more cookie cutter, just your generic basic rounds and bars, those are more susceptible to spot price because everybody's got them. Right. And so they have to have some basis for a value so that you can price them. They have to have, a value, to, they have to have a value to the customer and to the dealer. I mean, because how do you ever agree on a price if there's no if there's no basis to start with just to <laughs> talk about that? And that's the bulk of, and I, I wouldn't like to throw, I, I, I don't think I could throw a percentage of how much silver's out there that would fall in that category, mm -hmm. but a lot of it does. I right. mean, a lot of it's just generic generic silver. I mean, we've got generic silver here mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we don't really look to, we're not trying to create a market for these, these bars. Um, so these bars right here would be some of the bars you say you're not really trying to create a market I'm not for trying, trying to create a market on these I'm, I'm, I'm trying to sell these so the right. idea is you know how do I sell them well we look at where spot price is and say what's the value of 10 ounces of silver and that's where we start to determine what what value that is when we purchase it and what value it is when we we stick a price on it to sell to a customer so so you actually do use spot price in your in your pricing mm -hmm. yeah. and and most dealers you would say you in your opinion for probably. for majority of silver that comes in that we call generic silver yes right. i would think that spot price has a, a direct impact on buying and selling or wow. it should yes well my viewers are going to really enjoy this video because it's going gonna, it's gonna to make me have to eat crow but that's okay i mean it's information is more important the correct and right information is more well, important, it, and different points of view are important. Yeah, as well. but let me add though that spot price doesn't necessarily dictate the price right, either. Exactly. So the premiums, I mean, and we've seen this, so we've talked about this, that the premiums over the last two years have almost doubled in terms of where we start at spot price and where we see a sell price on, mm -hmm. on say, a 10 ounce bar. So, you know, speaking on a 10 ounce bar, you know, we might have had a, you know, say spot. 
was $20 and maybe in 2019 we would have sold this for $215 okay maybe take paid if it was $20 an ounce we might have paid $200 when it came in and sold it for 215 right so there's a dollar 50 we saw that kind of erode after 2020 we saw spot price maybe still at 20 let's use that example but mm. these were selling at 260 right so like what happened well that anomaly is simply based on i believe the fact that there was a lot of cash flowing around in the society i think mm -hmm. a lot of people had a lot of money i think and i think what happened was that not necessarily all dealers but i think a lot of the bigger dealers out there took advantage of that and i think they increased their premiums regardless of where spot price was and it really wasn't justified right. i don't think and you know we saw um you know we saw them charging enormous premiums now what they were paying for it i don't know i mean it's hard to say i know what we were paying we were paying way over spot just to get the items because, yeah i remember that um you know we were um say we were selling this part say spot was 20 and we were selling the bar at 260 we were probably paying 240 or 245 for the bar at that point which is over spot um but again spot had a usefulness at that point even then because we could look at that and say, you know, how much over spot do we need to pay to get a bar so we could sell it at the current market price? Right, so, exactly. but I think what we're seeing now is some of those premiums are eroding, and we're getting back to a normality that we saw back in you know 2019 and earlier, where spot price had more of a direct impact on what you expected to pay and expected to get for your silver. That makes a whole lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. So, so yeah, so I'm definitely going, I'm definitely glad I came in here to talk to you about this because it does change some perspectives for me and it makes a lot of sense. You cleared up some things and it's important. It's important to understand first silver's value. Sometimes it's personal, like what I value, like I may value this um, silver bar because I'm just a, you know, Scottsdale fan yeah. over somebody else that would just say, okay, but well, this is just you know, silver bullion to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that makes sense. I appreciate your time, Phil. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'll be waiting for the other ones to come in. Oh, yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Now, look, <laughs> I would never say that I understand premiums, spot price, or selling silver half as much as Phil does. And so this is what I'm saying. You heard what I said about uh, physical silver premiums and spot price and the true price and you've heard what he said his take his opinion and so you come to your own conclusions about where you see the true value versus spot price and premiums and that's all this is all about that's the whole purpose of me posting these types of videos and this type of content in the silver stein community is just to inform your thinking just to give you something to think about Maybe an avenue to explore. Maybe something you hadn't considered. So anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by, watching my videos, commenting, interacting with me. And you know what? We're just going to keep the silver chain rolling. Keep stacking. Peace.